Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Another week. Time to recap last week. Time to look forward to this week. And time to figure out what exactly is moving the markets. Plus, we're going to get some hints and tips on Generation Z. Got a whole show planned for you after a nice long weekend. Schwab talks about doing this one thing can add significant wealth to your years of investing. Airbnb is having a big day. Airbnb and Blackstone are rising on news. They'll join the S&P 500. I like Airbnb. I own Airbnb. I think it's a good long-term name as a play on anyone under 50 traveling. Not necessarily going to put Hilton and Marriott out of business, but my family, when we do trips now, as a family, it's always Airbnb or VRBO, to be fair. Um, and it's not cheap. And what Airbnb doesn't have is actual hotels and employees. What Airbnb does not have going for them is governments realize that hotels pay a lot of money and create jobs. There's some issues there. Things that we could talk about today, we will hit a plenty. The NASDAQ year to date up 35%, the SP 500 up 18%. Those are amazing years. I would say let's pack up and go home, but it's only September 5. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 5%, a little bit of a laggard. Maybe there's some value shopping there. Bitcoin up 55%, but having a lot of problem with 30,000. A lot of problems. And Americans, they're not really sold on Bitcoin yet, according to new research. NVIDIA up 238%. Some people think it can easily go another double. Some people think it has a, maybe 50 to 100 points upside. But a lot of people are worried that it's trading at about 40 times next year's earnings, which isn't bad. My question is, what will they be doing in 10 years? Is smaller, cheaper, faster? Is really, and I say this all the time, it's really pushing the boundaries already. Now, NVIDIA's got the software that complements their semiconductor hardware. Burning Man was a great story this weekend. Boy, that divides a lot of people, huh? A monsoon dumping two to three months worth of rain on the counterculture fest turned into a mud bowl. Um, for me, I think Burning Man probably jumped the shark when Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk went. Before that, from what I've heard, it had incredible DJs, incredible artists. A penultimate night of Burning the Man. And it was just a lot smaller. I love festivals. I think festivals define humanity. Every major culture in the last 2,000 years has have had festivals. Just throwing that down there for you. Just throwing that down there for you. Um, Novo Nordisk, how, how big is weight loss? Novo Nordisk is now the largest company by value in Europe, taking out LVMH. The Danish drug maker had a value of $428 billion when European markets closed yesterday, compared to $419 billion for Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. That's pretty impressive. Other things to consider, let's talk about today. Let's talk about a new market. We had the day off yesterday. Goldman Sachs has lowered its probability of the U.S. suffering a recession to just 15% from 20%. The bad news is good news, or the good news is bad news. Lower chance of recession, higher interest rates. That's such a bummer, man. Market struggles around 4.25, a lot. Why? Because all my new cash, I'm saying, I'm just going to sit in cash for a while until I see the ultimate bargain of stock. Of which I have one or two this week that I will be buying. Probably one is the right way of saying that because of my uh, managed uh, debt, uh, private debt company. Um, 
uh, in this case, it's actual private equity. There's private debt, private equity, private credit. Um, all three create income. So I'm adding a major income play to my portfolio and you can't buy it. It's, it's for, it's not that you can't buy it. It's you have to be accredited. It's not for the average retail investor. And you have to have an account with a company that has a relationship with. So it's, it's tough explaining it other than to say I have it with EP Wealth. The main drivers this morning, Airbnb up 6%, Blackstone up 3.7. Oh, I should have mentioned when I mentioned Airbnb adding to the S&P 500. That means when you buy an S&P 500 fund at your uh, 401k, you're going to be owning shares of Airbnb. Same with the thing with Blackstone today. I like both of those companies as long-term investments. Oracle up slightly, being upgraded to overweight from equal weight at Barclays. American Express up after being upgraded to outperform, second perform. But the markets are starting off sluggish and slow for sure. I remember I talked a little bit about um, Bitcoin. I should explain a little bit more about that. There was a survey um, that was sent around talking about are you optimistic or not? And Chamath Palipiapja, I'm so bad with that long names, um, said two years ago that Bitcoin had replaced gold and would rocket to 200,000. He changed his tune. He said, crypto dead in America. Interesting, right? Two years ago, he was in the hype machine of up to 200,000. Now he's like, it's been overhyped. And maybe that's the buy signal, right? Uh, tech investor who previously claimed Bitcoin has replaced gold and would eventually 200,000 says crypto is dead in America. The United States authorities have firmly pointed their guns at crypto. He says the SEC has ramped up enforcement of the crypto industry, bearing down on companies and projects that were allegedly selling unregistered securities. I would be just very cautious owning it. And I know a lot of people under 35 are looking for the Burning Man equivalent of investing, i.e. not wanting to go the way of the stocks, not wanting to go bonds or real estate, but wanting to get something that older people don't understand. And Bitcoin's trading 25,774. I don't believe that until I have it installed on my phone and I'm buying stuff with Bitcoin, that it's a true digital currency. I'd almost consider Apple being a digital currency play in the sense that people have uh, uploaded One. credit cards into their phones. And that I see them use that all the time. Never seen anyone use Bitcoin so far. Although I have seen, for the record, and this is hilarious, up in Lake Tahoe, uh, there's a Bitcoin ATM, and I asked the, in a gas station, and I asked the gas station, and I'm like, what's this all about? She goes, oh, they pay us to have that there. I'm like, oh, kind of interesting. Investors are still optimistic about Bitcoin because the U.S. court recently sided with Grayscale in a lawsuit against the SEC, which denied the company's application to convert its Bitcoin trust into an ETF. I'd just be cautious. If you have 5%, it's more than enough to hit a major home run for you. Don't want to work forever? Check out the retirement planning guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Took yesterday off for Labor Day and spent a little more quality time with my family. I expect as I age, that'll be more of a common thing because I don't want to be the person to look back and say, I had a lot of money. I didn't spend any time with my kids. I'm a lonely old man with money. <laughs> but with that being said, I enjoy doing this podcast enormously. And thanks for being a part of it. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I put up a report usually every week, except for when Monday is a holiday, so not this week, where I interview a market strategist from EP Wealth, Adam Phillips. It's probably my best work in the sense that I shut up and listen, and then I ask him questions on what he's seeing in the economy. He's a market strategist, and to give you access to someone who is a market strategist, it's pretty cool. 
not having to turn on CNBC or Bloomberg where it's a little sensationalized and well, not Bloomberg, but CNBC. So let's hit some headlines, shall we? So, oh, check it out at Rob Black Show on YouTube. Rob Black Show on YouTube. Apple is expected to host its new product release on September 12th. It's expected to include the iPhone 15 release preview and a new Apple Watch. It's expected the new iPhone will have a USB charging port, kicking the lightning charge to the curb after increased scrutiny from European regulators. It's live streamed on Apple's website. I think it's actually a pretty cool event to watch. Not exciting as it was 5, 10, 15 years ago, but still pretty cool nonetheless. If you did not get to Europe this summer, now may be the time to uh, plan a fall or spring trip. Uh, Several European airlines have started discounting flights now that the summer demand, evidenced by everyone, you know, posting pictures of themselves, sipping cocktails in lovely European cities have all come home. Other things to continue to talk about. Taylor Swift made some sort of crazy deal that I'm still trying to understand because it's a good TV story. It's not necessarily a good investment story other than the power of yourself investing in it. I fought with myself 15 years ago because she didn't see Taylor Swift as a major channel. Like, you're wrong on this one. And turns out I was right. Not saying that she'll ever admit that, but I was right. Taylor Swift's new concert movie will be playing at AMC and other theaters in October. So um, I think it's looking like a mostly weekend only thing, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It's two hours and 45 minutes. It's long. But what Swift did was they cut out the middleman. They went straight to AMC, the biggest movie chain in the world. AMC is having financial trouble. And instead of negotiating with Hollywood, like a Disney, to distribute the product, the film, um, Swift is like, do it myself. Well, I'm sure it's not her. I'm guessing she has a team. Um, the Taylor Swift concert has been unconventional. There's single fixed price for adults for tickets. Um, 1989. That's the, her birth year. And the fifth album, 1989. And for children's 1313. I.e. her favorite number twice. Costs more to see it in IMAX, of course. I think that's pretty entertaining that she basically flicked a finger at Disney. Um, Because Disney pocket 70% of opening weekend box office earnings. So it's going to get it all. And AMC is going to sell a lot of popcorn and sodas. Fascinating, right? (laughs) Do you agree with me? And if I'm Universal or if I'm Disney, I'm mad at AMC. We'll talk about that maybe a little later in the show. Probably not, but maybe. Generation Z and millennials are not on track for $3 million to retire comfortably. Retirement isn't cheap. The younger you are, the more you're going to need to save because of inflation. But the more time you have on your hands to save. Many young people don't appear to be doing that. More than half of Generation Z and millennials have less than 10000 saved for retirement. 40% of people aged 35 to 44 have $500 or less in savings. You're going to know a lot of your friends are going to be very poor in retirement. Just throwing that down there for you. Switching from millennials and Generation Z to a bigger picture, 50% of Americans can't afford their lifestyle of retirement. I think this show once started 25 years ago as a let's go beat Wall Street's butt. Let's beat Warren Buffett. Let's do this. Let's beat Wall Street and invest in tech stocks and growth stocks and not follow the same old rules that they were. And what I've done over 25 years is I've set myself up for retirement. So the show's really turned into a I've been able to afford retirement. Let's teach you a couple things on this. 
half the nation's working age households will not have enough money to maintain their standard of living once in retirement. You can probably have to work till 65 or 70. The idea of retiring early is a dream for these people. A pipe dream, not a realistic dream. Retirees won't be able to enjoy some of the same things that made them happy in their working years. They're going to have to go out for, to dinner for a, a lot less often. They may be no a, longer able to travel. Now, again, I didn't travel a lot in my 20s. Well, I did travel a lot in my 20s, but in my 30s, not so much. I kind of bear do, bore down and have been to Europe in 10 plus years. I don't think it's a d- national disaster, but it's you get what you settle for. This show is about getting you to retirement. And I'm doing the best I can to do that. Some other things to consider for today. Fed Governor Waller. He thinks the central bank can proceed carefully on interest rates. I think some of the setup for the next move in the markets, earnings have been pretty good. So that's a check. Because in the end, it is all about earnings, but it's also about earnings versus inflation. It's also about earnings versus interest rates. So Governor Waller said the central bank can proceed carefully. So one of the next steps for the market will probably be, okay, the Fed's done raising interest rates. Now, how long are you going to keep them where they are? Now, again, we may have one more increase left. I would doubt it. Based on just the data, samples from economists, but then again, I'm not a Federal Reserve member, nor are they. Um, and then I think the market has another leg up when the Fed starts cutting interest rates. And then that's when I would start thinking, hmm, what's the plan now? 30. Chip design firm Arm Holdings is seeking up to $52 billion in evaluation in a blockbuster U.S. IPO. It's going to be an interesting IPO because they're really good at what they do, but they're very more, much more similar like in Intel. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. So we all make financial mistakes, and most of mine, and this was pretty interesting because I got into a, not a fight, but a, how should we say, a discovery conversation with my spouse about my ability to pick stocks and how I have had a career on it. Um, She carries very little about what I do. And even though that's how we met, she doesn't really listen to the podcast. I can say things like horrible things about her right now and she'll never come back to her. Um, It might get to her friends, it might get to her, so I'm not going to do that. But... The mistakes that I've made haven't been stock picks because I did my stock pick mistakes in my 20s. I've been very honest about it. Um, I bought Apple and Microsoft in my 20s and I've held them. So I'm I'm genius there, right? Um, But the mistake that I made in my 20s was I also tried to do other things. And I bought companies like uh, cryomedical sciences. That what did they do? They had a cancer treatment that basically identified cancer, prostate cancer, and basically super imaging. Once the doctor sees the image, he can then insert a probe into your prostate and freeze the cancer and cut it out. And a lot of doctors used it. And the stock went from 2 to 15. It's looking pretty good. Only problem is a lot of doctors didn't use it a second time because I wasn't in the operating room. I wasn't reading the scientific journals that said it was too complicated to use and they didn't trust it. And down it goes. I fell for it in large part because I wanted to. My father passed away from cancer. And that seemed like, hey, it's going to affect us all. We're all getting older. Demographics, demographics, demographics. Cancer, 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 die, die, die. Spend a lot of money to prevent that. So my mistakes have not been a lot, because once I lost that money, I was like, I don't want to do that again. It's going to sound like an odd thing to say of stocks that I've owned personally and stocks that I've bought for clients. And I can't prove this, so I, I 
couldn't remember because I don't have the documents to show this. I don't think I have that many losing stocks. On my taxes, I can tell you the losses that I've taken to, to tax write-offs on stocks that I've bought have been very, very minimal. So I believe in capitalism. I believe, I believe in the S&P 500. I believe in time. So I do own companies like Airbnb and Amazon and Microsoft and Apple and Nike. Um, I've more than doubled my money in Disney, but it's been a loser for five years. I try to be as honest as I can on this show. The area where I can probably tell you I've lost the most money was dating in my 20s and 30s. Is that I had pretty good cash flow. And I went to things like a concert in the front row in Miami, which great city, especially in your 20s and you're you know dating and you want a nice dinner and a little dancing and some live music. But I spent too much money on that stuff. And I always paid for the lady because like I thought that's what I had to offer. Not my sense of humor, not my, you know, good job, not my great looks. But the ability to let love lead to debt or cash flow problems. I've never gotten into those serious debt. The, the most serious debt I got into was college on credit cards. And it took me three to four years out of college to figure that out and say, nope, never again. So I've learned from my mistakes in my 20s. Um, I don't buy ancillary stocks that are like, oh, that's a great story for us, Gump, and you tell it so well. I can tell you another company that I lost on was a company called Exodus Communications, which basically was cloud services before there was clouds on the internet. It was too early. We were still dealing with mainframes. We were still dealing with the internet, intranets. Uh, we weren't dealing with buying cloud services from Ellen, Han Ellen Hancock, who came from IBM, which was a great company then in the 90s or a legacy company is probably the better way of saying it. But yeah, that, that was a company that went down. Now I, I took it up. And I think ultimately, like for inside on WorldCom, you know, one of the greatest stocks to ever go to zero. But I made money on WorldCom because I bought it in the 20s and sold it in the 40s. It went to 60. I was like, oh, dang it. And then it went all the way down to zero because of fraud. When I was starting out in the 90s, uh, I trusted that WorldCom had revenue that was theirs. But what I didn't know was on their financial statements, um, they would make a deal with another company and say, hey, if we buy $100 million of services from you, will you buy $100 million of services from us? So it wasn't really real revenue. And it was fraud. And that will happen to you when you sit around investing long enough, you will buy something that you are misled on. But for me, my biggest financial mistakes, not in the stock market, it's been in love. Uh, I've got one or two girls that got away. This is part of the show where my wife and I don't like this. That if I didn't have this career, I probably would have been focused more on let's settle down and have kids. But I didn't get married in my 20s because I was working too hard at this stuff. So my problem was in my 20s was I wanted to live the life of a married man or a dating man, but also I wanted to live the life of an entrepreneur working to get ahead in the world. Those are my mistakes, not necessarily yours. Some other things to consider. Um, robots are now pouring drinks in Vegas. What's interesting about this story, and it was on NPR was that studies have shown between 38 and 65% of all jobs in Vegas could be automated by 2035. Ain't that something? Robots can serve food. They can be behind the bar serving drinks. For a city that relies heavily on labor, Vegas is investing in robots aggressively. Planet Hollywood on the Las Vegas Strip has two robots that serve customers drinks. It's a bar called the Tipsy Robot. 
Um, not only are we talking about, you know, robots serving drinks. Now, that's going to be expensive to put that in. That's not going to be cheap. But if they can get the system to the point that it doesn't flop, it, it can be something. If you think about it, what else um, could go away in the service industry? Kiosks have replaced people that check you in. I know that always think about going to Vegas. Um, if you're there to see a, a great show and you're, you get there and you're landed and you're like, I'm not going to do the slides, I'm not going to gamble, but I, I just want to check into my room. And then you get to the hotel and there's a crazy deluge of people uh, waiting to check in. Checking kiosks have replaced people at the front desk of hotels. Last time I was in Vegas um, to see a show, tech spot in the hotel could make they've replaced the concierge and you sign into the tech spot and it's got a cute name like Marla or something along those lines and you know, you're saying is that a cute name it's okay so it's not a cute name but when you check in your hotel tells you hey if you want ideas on booking restaurants we could do that for you with our tech spot so concierge being replaced by tech spots they can serve food they could be behind the bar they can pour drinks they can check you in now, this is the resort industry that we're talking about, right? It can replace workers and not affect productivity or hurt the customer experience. And I did make a reservation for dinner through the bot. Um, now, again, it kind of skewed towards the property, but I didn't talk to a human. And I stayed on the property, which is interesting to note. The culinary union in Vegas is prepared to strike over AI. The culinary union represents 60,000 service and hospitality workers in Vegas and Reno. It hopes to have a new negotiated contract. So it's not just going to be the writers on strike and the actors on strike, but it's the chefs, the bartenders. I think this is a big story. I don't want to underplay it for you. I think it's a big story, and I think um, I just hope people are honest about it. There should be a lot of displacement on services. One of my goals is to get you to retirement, and we've said that numerous times on this show. And the best way to do that is to get you to save as much money as possible and get you to or get you to work as long as possible. That's not a lot of fun, and I know that. One. Um. But that's the goal. I think the individual, when I started this 25 years ago, a million dollars was a big number. It's like that scene in Austin Powers where uh, Dr. Evil comes out of the cryo freeze and goes, I'm going to hold the world hostage for a million dollars. And his crony is like, hey, guy, times have changed, times have changed, times have changed, inflation. So he comes back and he goes, I'm going to hold the world hostage for one million dollars. I used to think that a million was enough. Now that number for most people is going to be between two to four million. Whether you're a couple or not, inflation has hit your retirement. Millennials are looking probably at more like five million to keep up with their lifestyle. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. The writer strike is starting to hit California to the tune of $5 billion. We've talked about robots on the show, replacing jobs in Vegas and city. Now, it's not going to happen instantly. But if you take a bar 10, a bar of two people and replace it with two robots and have one uh, kind of bus boy or one human bartender who can talk to people, who can make sure the robot doesn't pour the wrong drink, who can make sure the robot tops off the drink properly, who can pick up a messy cup that the robot knocks over. The company is called Tipsy Robot, if you want to take a look. And you can also look at Hard Rock hotel hard rock cafe um in vegas if you actually want to see it they've had one bar open now they're opening a second bar with it now here's another thing on why this is happening 
I went to a restaurant um, Saturday night, a nicer restaurant, and um, made an early reservation because it's a busy restaurant. Kind of like the senior citizen early bird discount without getting the early bird discount. And there just there weren't enough waiters. They could have, and chefs, there weren't enough service people to operate the restaurant at full capacity. And you see that everywhere now. It's worthy of note. I'm expecting home sales or home prices to cool in the fall. Home sales look to set the, to end the typically hot summer on a muted note as mortgage rates hover above 7%. Data in recent weeks have painted a pretty tough picture of the housing market where Muhammad al an economist, said something kind of eloquent. He goes, the Fed has broken supply and demand in housing. That's never happened. Because interest rates moved up so quickly, people feel trapped in their low rate mortgage. But people who didn't get a home before two years ago feel, oh man, I could afford it. Could I was projecting that I could afford it in two years. But in those two years, interest rates have skyrocketed on us and I can no longer afford it. So the supply, not a lot's coming on because typically people need housing and shelter. They don't just sell a house and retire and live in a cardboard box. They sell a home and move to another location that's cheaper and buy another home. But they, too, would have the problem of financing at a higher rate. It's been a difficult year for buying a home. I think we're all seeing that. Um, so in the fall, it's expected prices should come down a little bit. They've moved up. After the last half of 2022 and the first couple months of 2023 falling slightly, they've kind of revert, come back to let's go sideways to slightly up. Housing market typically slows down toward the end of the year as temperatures drop in much of the United States and family prepares to start of the school year and the holiday season. So my vacation summer ended this weekend as soccer and high school and Everything just mounts on the family uh, time commitments. And and now that I've got a kid in high school, next couple of years, it's not going to be about soccer, but preparing for SATs and studying and wanting to hang out with his friends more so than his parents. Big winners this year have been Pulte Homes and Toll Brothers. I will say for the record, I've never owned a home builder. I've wanted to, but... It's just a cycle that I don't really understand, so I stay away from it. Pulte is up 82% for the year. Total Brothers is up 68%. Stocks related to home building have outperformed the broader market. But the housing market typically slows down by the end of the year, so keep that in mind. We need more housing. We need a lot more housing. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. One week from today, Apple's going to have its um, newest phone and operating system and watch on display. Probably hear about a couple other products like AirPods. We've already heard about their augmented reality headset. So probably won't hear much about that. But last year, Apple introduced the crash detection to the Apple Watch and they subsequently trickled it down into the phone. That's a life-saving device. And I've programmed my phone so that it does contact 911 if, it, if I don't pick it up and answer or make a call after a car crash. You have to actively turn that on and keep it on. So it's not a, it doesn't help you if you get in a car crash, your phone flies out and it's in the middle of the road. Unless you program it to automatically call 911 if it's not in your hands. Um, but I think you're going to see more and more. They now have a an action button on the new iPhone, one that's believed to replace the mute switch in current iPhones. It could be programmable. It could act as a preset button of sorts, the kind that could be assigned to either turn on the flashlight, launch the camera, function as a mute switch. 
um, or put you into a shortcut app on the phone where it can call 911 if you're being attacked by a criminal. One. I tried to go into the rape angle, but I'm like, I don't know if I can pull that off without sounding like an idiot. It would be a discreet way of getting help where if you have your phone in your hand, you could just punch a button and it doesn't even light up. It doesn't show that you're calling 911. Um, Apple needs to do more stuff like this because in the end, parents like me, all we do is want to love our kids and get them to 18 safe and sound. Uh, you're going to see more health features 30. to keep you alive, but you're also going to see more safety feature features to keep you alive. Anyhow, I think it's interesting how it's not necessarily about a faster phone now or better graphics. It's about features to separate themselves from other phone makers. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.